what the probability identity is. And then we're going to work with it. So this identity, I don't think, I actually can't remember if this is on the formula sheet. I think it is. It is, okay. So that is the probability identity. <clears throat> so what this formula does is it gives us a formula that we can use to calculate any of these four probabilities. So guys, it's not always going to be as straightforward where you have the probability of A and you have the probability of B and you have the probability of A and B and you're just adding them together and subtracting to get the OR. Often they'll give you, say, maybe this one and that one and that one, and you need to find the probability of B. Right? Does that make sense? So often they give you three of the parts of the four parts of this identity, and you need to calculate the fourth one. Now, what they also do quite often, especially in the past paper questions, is they give us information like two events are independent. Do we remember that from earlier in the year? We did talk about independent events, so I want us to write that down as well. So if two events are independent, then the probability of, let's say, let's call them A and B, right? Whatever those two events are, the and, the probability of the and, will be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now, earlier in the year, we did it... I want to say 20 times where you had two events and the question was, are they independent? And you had to work the left-hand side out and then separately you had to work out what the right-hand side was and then you had to say they're equal, so therefore they're independent. Okay, at the end of the year, it doesn't really get tested in that way as often. What they usually do is they'll give you again two of these and you need to find the third one. Right, if they're telling you that they're independent. You'll see now when we get to the examples. And then the other thing that you need to know that also comes up in the questions very often is mutually exclusive, which is also something that we spoke about at the beginning of the year. If two events are mutually exclusive, that means they can't happen at the same time. So the and, probability of A and B, is then going to be equal to zero. <clears throat> Guys, unfortunately, you're going to have to memorize these things. Okay, if you don't memorize these things, you're not going to be able to do these questions. All right, so you have to know, if they use the words mutually exclusive, you need to know that straight away, the and is going to be zero. Okay, if they're independent, the and is going to be the product of the two. Okay, you have to be able to memorize those. So I'm quickly just going to highlight here, independent, if you see that word, you need to think and, and then you need to think product. All right, those go together. If you see mutually exclusive, you also have to think and, and then that and is zero. <clears throat> All right, I want us to look at, sorry, let me just get the right one here. I want us to look at the November 2021 question. So I'm just going to write here. And we are looking at question 12.1. 12.2 you won't be able to do yet, guys. 12.2 is the new work that we must still do. So we're going to look at 12.1 quickly. Now, in 12.1, they're starting out immediately by saying A and B are independent events, right? That's the first thing that they've told us. So they're saying A and B 
are independent. Guys, as soon as you see that, I want you to write down what happens when two events are independent. The and is equal to the product. So from that, we know immediately, without even reading further, they've told me that the two events are independent, so I'm going to write down immediately that the probability of A and B is the probability of A times the probability of B. Okay. We don't know yet what the values are, but we at least know that. <clears throat> Next up, they're saying if it is or it is further given that, sorry, it is further given that the probability of A and B, so there they're actually giving us this probability of A and B is 0, 0,3. So we can fill that in. 0, 0,3 is going to be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. All right, they gave us this information. They told us that this is 0, 0,3. <clears throat> now, if you read further, unfortunately, they haven't told us what the probability of A is, and they also haven't told us what the probability of B is. Okay, so they haven't given us these values. But what they've also told us is the probability of only B, so I'm just listing what they gave us, is 0, 0,2. That's more information that was given. So, guys, all of this, everything that I've written down now, this was all given. For 12.1.1, the first question... They are asking us, are A and B mutually exclusive? Motivate your answer. Are A and B mutually exclusive? Now, guys, mutually exclusive. If two events are mutually exclusive, the and is zero. What is the and in this case? Zero comma three. So are those events mutually exclusive? No. So you're just going to say no. Probability of A and B is not equal to zero. Right, that's how we know that they're not mutually exclusive. Because that probability of both of them happening at the same time is not equal to zero. You can say equal 0, 0,3, which is not equal to zero if you want, but this is also enough. And guys, if you look at the mark allocation there, that's one mark. Okay, this would be one of the knowledge marks. So one of the kind of most basic marks that they say. And I almost feel like if you're reading through this question, because there, it seems like there's a lot going on, right? There's a lot of words and decimals and stuff. You might think, oh, I'm confused. Let's leave it out. Okay. But it's actually not that bad. Next one. 12.1.2a. They now are asking us to determine the probability of only a. So I'm just writing that that is what we have to find. Now, guys, what I'm going to do for this question, just because for me, it makes sense if I see my probabilities in a Venn diagram. I don't know how you guys feel about that. So I, with these questions, when I was still at school, when I used to struggle to visualize these, I used to just draw a little Venn diagram, okay? So how many events are we talking about here? There are only two, right? A and B. So just quickly, you don't even have to use a, a what's it called, a compass. You can just draw using pencil even. Just two little circles. Are they intersecting, guys? Is there an overlap between these two events? Yes, 0, 0,3, right? So I'm just drawing that in there. So that's why I'm making my two circles intersect. Oopsie. Move that back. What is happening? Guys, are you seeing this? <laughs> no! Let's just leave it like that. Okay, and then I'm going to do my little box. Yes? Did someone say ma'am? No. Oh, I thought you said ma'am. All right, I'm doing my little box. Guys, this is just almost like working, right? So don't worry about it being perfect. <clears throat> I just want us to be able to visualize what's happening here. And now I'm going to fill in what I have. Because, guys, in our probability identity, 
Do we have only A anywhere in this, where is it now, this probability identity that we have here? We have the probability of A, but is this only A? That's the whole A circle, right? And the whole A circle consists of only A and A and B. Okay, so maybe we should add that to the note, actually. That's quite a good thing to add there. So the probability of A, if you have space, there where we wrote the probability identity. So this would be probability of A only plus the probability of A and B. Right? It's the whole A circle. And the whole A circle consists of the part that doesn't overlap with B and then the part that does overlap with B. The part that doesn't overlap with B is A only or only A. That's what they've said in the question. And the part that does overlap with B is A and B. Then I'm going to write the same thing for probability of B here because, again, this is the whole B circle. So this will be B only. So the part that doesn't overlap with A plus the part that does overlap with B, or with A, sorry. All right, now what I want you to do, if you've drawn your little Venn diagram, on your Venn diagram, just take your pencil and just shade in the part that you think we're looking for. They're asking for only A. So on your Venn diagram, just, just very lightly shade the section that we are actually looking for, the value that we need to calculate here. Only A, do we agree that it is the part of A that doesn't overlap with B? That is only A, right? So only A and then A and B. That is only B. Okay, let's see what values do we actually have. What have they given us here? They told us that A and B is 0.3, right? That was given. Where is that going to go? In this middle part, hey? So we have 0, 0,3 there. Then we also have, this is also given in the question, only B is 0, 0,2. So guys, do we actually have the probability of B? Right? We actually do. Hey, the probability of B is going to be 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,2. Okay? So let's write that down because that wasn't given information. We've seen that now by writing it onto our, or filling our values into the Venn diagram. So the probability of B is equal to 0, 0,5. <clears throat> now guys remember what did they give us also in the beginning this i'm going back to this we wrote this down but we haven't actually used it yet right remember they told us that the two events are independent so we know that the and is equal to a times b now we have the probability of b is 0.5 so I can use this as an equation. I can put 0, 0,5 there in the place of probability of B, and that will give me the probability of A if I then work it out. And will that help me, guys, if I have the probability of A? Can I then use that to get A only? I can say whatever this is, the probability of the whole A circle, minus 0, 0,3. Okay. Right, so let's use our 0, 0,3 equals probability of A times probability of B. Right, we got that from the given information. I'm just going to write on the side where that came from. This is because they were independent. Okay, in case you're looking back at this and you can't remember where we got this from. It's because they said that the two events are independent, so we know the product is equal to the and. <clears throat> now we have that 0, 0,3 is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. We just worked out that that is 
0, 0,5. So now we can calculate the probability of A. How can I get that P of A alone? What must I do with the 0, 0,5? Divide. So we're going to say 0, 0,3 divided by 0, 0,5, which is... Is it 0, 0,6? Just check quickly, I think so. Is it? Thank you. All right, 0, 0,6. So that means this whole A circle must be 0, 0,6, guys. So what is A only going to be? 0, 0,6 minus 0, 0,3. Okay, so therefore the probability of only A or A only, it doesn't really matter, is going to be 0, 0,6 minus 0, 0,3, which is also going to give us 0, 0,3. So guys, I really do suggest, I think it's just much easier to see what's going on if you actually draw it on a little Venn diagram. Otherwise, you have all these decimals and you have all these brackets and all these products and things. It's just a bit overwhelming. Okay, I really do think it makes it easier to see what's going on if you're drawing it in the Venn diagrams. Okay, that was a four mark question. Getting to that 0, 0,3. All right, now for B, they are now asking us, the probability of not A or not B. Now guys, this question, yeah, if you look at the memo, they have all these different ways of getting to it. What I would suggest, this is an or question, right? For an or question, you can always use the probability identity, okay? So whenever you see or in a question, if you're not sure, because some of you might be able to see it just by looking at your Venn diagram, which is fine, then you can just write your answer down. But I suggest just make sure and actually use the probability identity. Whenever you see or, you can use that. And what does the probability identity say? Remember, we had it as A or B. Now it's not A or not B. So now we're going to say it's the probability of not A. That's our first event. Plus the probability of not B. Minus the probability of not A and not B. Which I'll show you now how we're going to get that. <clears throat> now guys before we can use our venn diagram because again i'm going to use the venn diagram it is the easiest way to get our our values here we just need to make sure that we actually have filled everything in Right, because we were just working with A and B and stuff over here. But remember, we can have a value on the outside of those two circles. Right? If I add these three values together, what am I going to get? 0, 0,3 plus 0, 0,3, that's 0, 0,6 plus 0, 0,2, that's 0, 0,8. What are all these values supposed to add up to? 1. Okay, good. So if I only have 0, 0,8 in my circles, then I'm supposed to have a 0, 0,2 still on the outside of those circles. Okay, let's see. Now, when they're saying not A, that means everything that's not A. All right, so what you can do, you can just take your finger and you can cover A. Both of these values together, that's going to be not A. All right, so the stuff that's B only, that's not A, right? But then also the probability of not being A or B, that's not A as well. All right, so for this one, it's going to be 0, 0,4. Plus the probability of not B. Now we're going to do the same thing, but now I'm covering B. What's that? 0, 0,5. Minus 
now we need to do and guys so now we need to look for the probability that satisfies both of these <clears throat> so the probability that is not a but is also not b what do we think that's just going to be the 0 comma 2 hey that's going to be the value that's not a and it is also not b okay so that i'm actually going to write it in red here so that you can see that it's that same value Okay, and then we must just work that out. So 0 0.4 plus 0 0.5, that's 0 0.9, minus 0 0.2 is 0 0.7. Okay, so I just wanted you guys to see this example specifically, because even for me, when I saw this, I had never actually thought of using the probability identity for a not question, right? But actually, we can almost like ignore what those things are and just the fact that there's an or means that we can use the probability identity, okay? It actually makes it much easier because then you're looking for three separate sets of values and you're just applying the identity. Okay, this was a two mark question. So I think it was probably, I can't remember now how the marks were structured, but I think it was that. <clears throat> So a mark for applying and a mark for the answer. For the mark allocation for the previous one, you got a mark for getting that, if I remember correctly, for the probability of B. So for recognizing that if you add those two together, you get B. And then there was one mark for setting this up, using that independent events thing, getting that the probability of A, the whole circle was 0 0.6, and then a mark for the final answer for subtracting the answer <coughs> section. All right, I want you now on your own to try on the next, well, on the back of the page, the November 2019 question 11.1, which is similar. It's not exactly the same, but you also have to use the same kind of yeah, knowledge. November 2019 question 11.1. <clears throat> okay i'm going to give you a few minutes to work on that don't look at 11.2 you won't be able to do that yet <clears throat> this question the first thing that they told us is that a and b are independent you don't have to write that down i have just written it down so that we know where that's coming from so if they've told us that a and b are independent then we know that this is going to be true okay then they've actually given us the probability of a and the probability of b i wrote them here on the side but guys the fact that they've given us these two probabilities means that we can use this formula now right the fact that they're independent means that the AND is going to be the product, right? So you can then use that, that formula to calculate 0 0.4 times 0 0.25, that is 0 0,1. Okay, so they haven't, they haven't actually asked you to calculate the probability of A and B, right? They didn't say that at all. But guys, you have to know what that is so that you can fill in your Venn diagram. Okay, so even though they haven't explicitly said calculate the probability of A and B, you have to calculate it so that you can fill in your Venn diagram. And they've given you all the information that you need to get to that answer, right? Simply by saying that A and B are independent. Okay, so that's why I said, guys, as soon as you see the word independent or independent events, you need to write that down straight away and see how you can use it. Okay, they're not going to tell you that the events are independent if you don't have to use that. All right. So that's the first thing. Now when you are drawing your Venn diagram, because the AND is 0, 0,1, those two circles are overlapping. Okay, and the 0, 0,1 is going to go in that section where they're overlapping. That is the AND. Now guys, they've told us that the probability of A is 0, 0,4. But remember, that includes the AND part already. So you can't put a 0, 0,4 here. You have to say 0, 0,4 minus the AND to get that 0, 0,3. Okay, that is one of the most common mistakes. So to get that value, 
you need to say 0, 0,4 minus 0, 0,1. The whole A circle must add up to 0, 0,4, that probability that they've given us. The same thing for B. They've told us that the probability of B, it's up there, is 0, 0,25. So both of these values together must give you 0, 0,25. So for this, you have to say 0, 0,25 minus the AND. That's why you needed the AND first, because you need to use that AND to get the outer bits. All right, and then, like I said, you just need to check if these three values add up to one, guys, then you're not going to have something on the outside of the circles. Okay, but these three values only add up to 0, 0,55, so you still have to put in a 0, 0,45 there. You can just say one minus these three, and then the answer that you get will get you that one there. So... For that one, you're going to say 1 minus 0, 0,3 minus 0, 0,1 minus 0, 0,15. Okay, that was a three mark question. All right, so it should take you three minutes to do. I think you guys are able to do that in three minutes, right? But guys, unfortunately, if you missed this, the fact that A and B are independent... If you didn't immediately write that down, you wouldn't have been able to calculate the AND and then you wouldn't have been able to go further. All right, so just that one, what is this, five words, <laughs> just those five words, that is the key to actually being able to do this question. Okay, now next up, I heard you guys were debating this one. They've asked you to find the probability of A or not B. So again, because it's an OR question, I use the probability identity. All right, so that is my first line. The probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event, which is now not B. Minus. <laughs> I'll show you guys now. I'm going to highlight on the Venn diagram so you can see exactly. All right. Minus then the probability of A and that second event. Right, so now we have an A, and then the second event is not B. In the previous question, it was not A and not B. Okay, but now it's A and then not B. So I'll be fine with that first line, guys. That's just using the probability identity. Okay, now I'm going to use a highlighter to show you, because some of you have asked me, why must we minus this? Why is that necessary? Okay, I'm going to show you now. When you are taking the probability of A... On the Venn diagram, do we agree that it's this? This is the probability of A, right? Let me just color that in quickly. That whole thing, that circle. Yes, probability of A. Then we are adding the probability of not B. Now, guys, what is not B? Everything that is not the B circle, right? So again, 0, 0,3, so this one again. And 0, 0,45. Do you see that I've added the 0, 0,3 twice? Right, because the 0, 0,3 forms part of A, and then it also forms part of the not B. So I actually have added 0, 0,3 twice here. Guys, if you add these two together, you're going to get something that's bigger than 1, which isn't even possible in probability, right? If you say 0, 0,4 plus 0, 0,75, that's bigger than 1. You can't have a probability that's bigger than 1. So that is why we must then subtract the probability that we counted twice. I'll be with you now. If we're looking at A and not B, let's see how does that work. We're looking for the probability that lies in both of them. So that lies in A. Do we agree that A is these two? And then not B is also these two. Guys, 0 0.3 was in both of them. So that is the and. Okay, so that is the one that we are then subtracting. That's where the probability identity comes from. You're adding the two probabilities, but then you're subtracting the part that you added twice. Okay. And then you get to your final answer. Was your hand up, Kevin? You're fine. Okay. That one was two marks. I'm guessing also a mark and a mark there. As I know it seems confusing, but if you actually just know your formulas and you know what the, pro what the terms mean, then you can do it. Okay, so I don't want you to think... Oh, it's confusing. I'm going to leave it out. I really want you to be able to do these. Okay, do question 12.1 on the next page, please. November 2018.
There we go. Do that one, please. Okay, I'll be fine up until that point. So now I've just written out that identity because, like I said, when I see or, I think probability identity. Right? Guys, we asked to find Y, which is this, the probability of B. Do we have the or? Yes. Do we have the A? Yes. Do we have the and? Yes. So we can use that identity, fill all of those values in, or you can just leave out the minus and as well. If you recognize from the start that they've told you that it's mutually exclusive, so that's zero, you don't actually have to write that down. Okay, you can just leave it out as well. But then we can just solve for y in that formula. Okay, so they've told us that the probability of A or B is 0, 0,74. That's equal to the probability of A, which is 0, 0,45 plus y, and then minus 0, or you can leave it if you want. Okay, I'm going to write minus 0 just because, you know, just for completeness sake. Okay, so now how am I going to get y on its own? I need to minus 0, 0,45, right? So 0, 0,74 minus 0, 0,45, is that 0, 0,29? Okay, so y is 0, 0,29. Here we go, that's the answer. <laughs> guys i just want to point out to you listen please that we wouldn't have been able to do any of these three questions if we didn't understand the probability identity right do we see how important that is i know that probability in itself is a huge section there are lots of little bits but every single year they test the probability identity along with independent events and mutually exclusive all right, so if we know those three things and we can apply them, then we will be able to get some marks in the final. Okay, I want you please for homework on the, the back of that page. What was this, 2018? If you look at November 2022, I would like you to do 10.1. All right, that is your homework for tomorrow. There are still four minutes left. Please read through that question. Check if there's anything that you want to ask me before you leave the class.